Uh, right now, I had the pleasure earlier in the day of speaking to a gentleman, Enrique Morones. Enrique Morones, uh, he, if everybody remembers, was previously on our show, and uh, he's the person who goes around on the border, Mexican United States border, and leaves water for people who are running across the border so that they don't they don't really dehydrate and actually get killed in the desert. It gets very hot. And literally people die trying to cross the border. So he leaves water for them on the trails uh, to allow them to survive as they enter without inspection across the border. Some people say that he is encouraging illegal immigration. I say, and he says, and I agree, he's saving lives. Because they're going to come whether he puts the water there or not. And at least he's helping to save their life. We have him back on the phone er earlier today. We spoke with him because there's been news reports coming out that ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, is literally finding the water on the trails and destroying it, making that these people will actually, will actually die of thirst crossing the border. Let's hear what Enrique has to say what's going on on the border. He was with us previously, Enrique Morones. He's the founder and director of Border Angels. It's an all-volunteer, non-for-profit organization that advocates for human rights, humane immigration reform, and social justice with special focus on the U.S.-Mexican border. Enrique, can you expand a little bit about this? Sure. Well, I'm glad to be back for 20 years now. We've been putting water out in the desert. So as migrants are crossing, the only way they can, because, you know, they don't get, there's no visas for them. Right. They don't qualify for visas. Right. right. So they risk right. their lives crossing through the desert. They cannot carry enough water. And sadly, people die on a regular basis. 11,000 people have died since the wall was originally put up in 1994. So we started putting water out there to save people's lives. And thanks to uh, Border Angels and other groups, we know we saved a lot of lives. And we continue to do that today, especially after the, uh, the hate messages and the hate direction that the country is going in because of Trump. So we've been very, very active out there, and we continue to put water out there today. Well, I, I think it's a great organization because it has nothing to do with helping to uh, bring people here illegally. It's about saving lives and, and being humane about it. Recently, there was a group, No More Deaths, based in Tucson, Arizona. They had posted a video of Border Patrol agents literally destroying water that you may have or, or similar groups may have put out there to help uh, immigrants who are crossing over. Uh, what do you have to say about this and what's going on with all of this? Sure. So No More Deaths is, is, in my opinion, the best organization that puts water out there. They started maybe about 12 or 14 years ago. They asked me to, to go to Tucson to show them how we did it because, you know, we had been around for a long time. Right. So they do, the, right. they do a similar thing. They go out there and they put gallons of water so as people are crossing, they don't die. And normally you don't see the people. You just leave the water. So they were suspecting that there was something going on with their water uh, containers, like ours. They, somebody's slashing them, cutting them open with knives, right. and they didn't know who it was. Uh -huh. They suspected it might be Border Patrol, but they put some motion-activated cameras so nobody would know the cameras were there. So as the people would approach the water, they could take a picture of them, whether it was somebody t you know getting a water or whether it was somebody uh, that was damaging the water bottle. And that's when they caught in action the Border Patrol slashing open the water bottles, kicking over the water bottles. A few of the agents were doing that, which is absolutely horrific it, because when you or I say we're dying of thirst, it's just an expression. Right. The people that drink this water really are dying of thirst. You're 100 have that water empty because, yeah, that's, that's a horrific situation. It, it is a horrific. And now the video that we just saw, this was video taken by the secret camera that was left out. By, by the No More Deaths organization, is that correct? That is correct, and that's actually old video. The reason they put it out again was because, once again, they've seen an increase in water bottles being sabotaged, as we have out here in California also. Now, now there are some people have been arrested for leaving water out to help migrants who are crossing over the border. Can you tell us about those arrests and why were they arrested? What was the crime that they, they committed? Apparently, in Arizona, there's some people that think that providing humanitarian aid is a crime. Of course, that is not a crime. 
but they said there was a professor from Arizona State University that yeah. was arrested, and it's unbelievable, unbelievable. They've done this there before. Before there was two students that had been arrested and, and, and detained for a while. Who actually arrested them? It was under the auspices of Customs and Border Patrol, whether it was ICE or, or the Border Patrol. They said he was providing aid to an undocumented person or persons and you know, putting water out there and, and serving water or leaving food. That is not a crime. He was not bringing the people across the border or anything like that, and it's just outrageous. Not only did he not bring people across the border, he didn't speak to anybody ahead of time and say, hey, when you cross the border and you go to this coordinate, here's the water. Okay, he was literally exactly. he was literally just leaving water out in the fields for anybody. It could have been an American. It could be anybody. I mean, my argument was that anybody could drink the water. It doesn't have to necessarily be a migrant. Maybe I'm leaving it for Border Patrol. What do you see in terms of people coming across the border? Well, it's not because of Trump. For the last five and a half years, there's been a 40% decline in unauthorized migrants. Migrants uh, are crossing a lot less because they're finding more work in Mexico. Right. They'd rather not come right. over here. So it's not because of Trump. It's because the economy is better elsewhere. However, people are still crossing. People are yeah. still crossing and people are still dying. And uh, what happens is that because of Trump, now this is where Trump comes in, because of Trump, people that like to practice hate, are doing it more often, whether it's law enforcement, like the case of the Slash Water Bottles, or whether it's hate groups, like what we saw in Virginia or saw in San Diego this past weekend. That is a dramatic increase because of Trump's words that leads to hate action. And I, I agree with you because he, make, he, makes, he makes the political di discourse in America accept some of this type of language and, and hate speech. Tell us about what happened this past weekend. It was in Chicano Park. What happened there? Chicano Park is an iconic park here in San Diego. It's the heart of the Mexican community. Beautiful murals. Families go there. They bring their children, Aztec dancers, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, for the second time, because of the beautiful murals, the right-wing radio shows here did a call-out for people to go to Chicano Park, people that like to practice racism and hate, right. to cause trouble there, to actually cause trouble. That's the message. About 25 neo-Nazis showed up. Right. We had about 800 people. We were 800 people there, and they went there to chant and scream and say these uh, very racist types of things, and we resisted by not you know, saying the same right. thing, but by just showing that we're there, that we love Chicano Park, that we love you know, whoever we are. And that we also love this country. And that, that's one of the beautiful things about this country is the diversity. They're saying that you know, there should be only American flags and only white people and things like that. Well, 25 people with racist intentions go to Chicano Park to cause trouble. At Friendship Park, which is what I talked about last time, right? where we had an, an agreement with children because of their parents, now they're not even letting 25 people go so, there. So tell us, tell us what Friendship Park is for those who didn't see you on our show last time. Friendship Park is where the wall started in 1994 between San Diego and Tijuana. You have the Pacific Ocean right there. There's a park. There's a park right by the ocean there, uh -huh. and it's called Friendship Park, thanks to uh, First Lady Pat Nixon. Back in 1971, she said, may this park never have a wall, and people can come and celebrate and so forth. Well, in 1994, when they started building the wall, that split up Friendship Park. Families go there from both sides of the, of the wall there to see each other. They haven't seen each other in 10, 15 years. They can go up to the wall, see each other, barely touch their fingertips. We were able to negotiate at Border Angels and some other people to have that park open on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 2, there was groups of 25 people that would show up, and people when we would do activities, etc. Well, as of last Saturday, the same day that the racist people were at Chicano Park, they changed the policies at Friendship Park. Who changed this policy? Who is responsible for changing the, this policy? The Friendship Park policy was changed by the the new Border Patrol chief, Rodney Scott. They say it's a security concern, and we're saying, wait a minute, you have 2,000 miles of wall. And, and that one place where the families meet, you're saying that that is a, a security and, and, concern? And now, let me ask you a question. Is anybody doing anything in the courts to try to rectify this? I'm going to definitely challenge it. I would challenge it, too. I agree with you. Any last uh, words before uh, we get back to trying to help uh, immigrants who are already here in the United States? Absolutely, that we shall overcome. We shall overcome that even in the darkest moments of our history, a bright light will appear. And that bright light right now is so bright, and it's the dreamers. Yes. We've got to make sure that we keep yeah. these dreamers here, that they continue DACA, and they have a clean DREAM Act. Then let these 800,000 people be able to 
to stay in this country without fear. I agree. Well, thank you. Your work is your work is very commendable. Keep up the great work, and hopefully we'll we'll speak with you soon here on the Brad and Squeeze Show. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Love overcomes hate. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.